Everybody say enlarge. He said enlarge the place of your tent. That means my capacity to understand and know what God wants to say and what God's doing. Then stretch out. Everybody say stretch out. So stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. You can preach hours on this, but you can grasp it. And then do not spare. I mean, be unlimited. Don't restrict. Then it says lengthen. Everybody say lengthen. Lengthen your cars and strengthen your stakes. Say strengthen. Then it says you will expand. Everybody say expand. How many know we got to expand? Now, what I didn't know was God was taking my old wine skin and soaking it. So I could expand with the new wine of revelation he was bringing. How many know you cannot put new wine in old wine skins? And when you're an old wine skin and you're a part of the last move of God, before you can be a part of the next move of God, you've got to have your wine skin re-soaked and renewed so when God pours a new wine in, you can expand. Yes. How many want to be able to expand? But see, that's the reason past denominational restoration movements they set up a denomination, set bylaws and decrees, and put them in cement, put them in dried skins, and when new revelation came, they couldn't expand. How many want to be able to continue to expand and continue to grow in God? Amen? Then it says, For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants, my children and my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and you, every one of you, will inherit what? What are we going to inherit? The nations, and make the desolate cities Inhabit it. Do not fear. Turn to your neighbor and say, do not fear. You know why God tells us every time he speaks to us, do not fear? Because we're such a fearful people. He knows the human nature. He says, do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. You're not going to be put to shame in your finances. You're not going to be put to shame in your family. You're not going to be put to shame in your ministry. You're not going to be disgraced. God says we're going to come through. We may look like we're in a mess now. We may be in a valley now, but we're coming out to the mountaintop. We're coming out to the top of God's purpose and plan. Amen? So for 50 years, my goal has been to perfect the church, to bring it to maturity, and I knew that all five full ministries needed to be restored. So in my book uh, of the eternal church, I predicted that there would have to be a restoration of prophets and apostles. Thank God they were restored, and we were working toward perfecting the church. How many know God wants a perfected church? But I kept asking the Lord when I was writing the eternal church book in 1978, 9, and 80, and published in 81, then updated it in 2000 to include the prophetic and apostolic movement. I kept asking the Lord, why are you restoring the church? If the only purpose God has for the church is to take us to heaven and be God's one big happy family and just whatever, float around and say, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus, you know, be hallelujah, hobos, the eternal triumphs, good for nothing, drift us forever. You know, if we're just going to go to heaven and be happy, floating spirit saints, then and, and all the purpose of God is to get us saved so we escape the hot spot and go to the cool spot. If that's the only purpose, then why keep restoring the church with the Protestant movement, 1500, you know, the evangelical movement, 1600, the holiness movement, 1700, divine healing movement, 1800, Pentecostal movement, 1900, deliverance evangelism, restoration, latter rain movement, 1948, the charismatic renewal, 1960s, and then uh, faith movement, 1970, prophetic apostolic in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and now the saints movement. What's he after? What's he trying to do? Why does God need to build a victorious, powerful, mighty church in this last day and hour? Because God has a purpose for the church. And here's what God told me. I'm a restoration person. How many know I'm a restoration person? How many restoration saints we have here? Just a few waiting for the rapture any moment so they can go to heaven. But I'm going to be, I'm going to be changed one day in a moment twenty for nine but not to go be good for nothing. I'm going to be changed so I can finish the job what I couldn't do in my mortality. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, I, I want you to know that there is progressive revelation uh, in Proverbs 29, 18. How many know that scripture? The old King James says, where there's no vision, the people perish. Another translation says, where there is no progressive revelation, the people wander aimlessly. 
Two other translations say, where there's no prophecy, the people are demoralized and they lose vision. How many know we need prophecy and we need vision? And so with that vision, and God has used me to be progressive revelation. I, I just want to um, take you on now to uh, the history of progression and progressive revelation. Amen. Are you with me here? Number five, uh, John. Come on with me. Number five. Come on. Hit number five. That's a winner right now. <laughs> We're going to keep this juicy. All right. I'm going to go through this real quick because i got some good stuff at the end that we want to really get into and we're going to believe for God's sovereign movement. Uh, how many know we have to progress? And we have to be progressive and, and move on. And so let me just give you a quick start. In 1959, uh, I started um, uh, writing or uh, teaching on the restoration of the church. How many were not on planet Earth in 1959? Uh, just a few. <laughs> All right. <laughs> In 1959, the year Tom was born. Was you born in 1959? 1959. That's <laughs> right. You're 50 years old this year. Everybody said, oh, Pastor Tom. <laughs> 50 years old. Tom, Tim's wife, Karen, turned 50 years old. They're all getting old on me. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Amen. But 1959, the year Tom was born, I started teaching on the restoration of the church. And then... 1978, I started writing the book on the Eternal Church, and um, I, uh, and got it finished in '81 and come off the press. And how many know when you finish what God's put it on your heart? Because you've heard the story. God spoke to me through several prophets to write the book, and I wrote the book on the Eternal Church. How many's read this book? Oh, several of you are going to have to go through the Great Tribulation. You haven't read my book yet. <laughs> Amen. But this book is the most book on the Church restoration. And for every move of God, from origination to destiny. How many really read this letter? How many shot look at it? All right. You, I, I wrote that. And uh, then after, see, if you've got something bottled up in you and God's got a destiny, if you don't ever fulfill it, you don't get the next revelation. Are you with me? You know, Sandy Fleet over here has written six books, and she gets new revelation more every time. Stand up, Sandy. Amen. She's written Destiny of Thieves and, and I don't know all those. She's just a powerful writer lately. Amen. Amen. And uh, so, I, it, was, it was in 1983 that God broke up on me the revelation of the company of prophets that God was going to raise up that I wrote in Prophets and Personal Prophecy. And I don't have time to explain that, but how many read this book? Many, many more. This is in almost every nation of the world and many, many uh, languages uh, from Mandarin, Chinese, to Japanese, Korean, Spanish, uh, I don't know, just about 15 or 20 different languages, Indonesian. And this tells you about the company of prophets God was going to raise up to prepare the way and make ready a people for the coming of the Lord, just like John the Baptist prepared the way for the Messiah to come and manifest on the earth. So now in the latter days, there'll be a company of prophets prepare the way for a second coming as John the Baptist prepared the way for the first coming. Now, sometimes you get a revelation and then God brings a movement. So in 1988, the prophetic movement was birthed, October the 15th, 1988 at our National Prophets Conference. And then I wrote later the Manual for Ministry and Spiritual Gifts, which we have taught over 250,000 people in this Manual for Ministry and Spiritual Gifts. How many have been trained in the Manual for Ministry and Spiritual Gifts? Wow, that's most of you here. Praise God. And then those 250,000, I find out of training and trained others. You know, what I discovered is, you know, everybody that's prophesying, people in teams, pretty well originated from here. How many realize that? Uh, I remember, what's our fellow prophet up in Charlotte? Rick Joyner. Uh, we fellowshiped some together then, and at that time, they didn't really believe or understand that you could lay hands on people and prophesy over them and set teams in. But but his people started coming down and attending the manual for ministry and spiritual gifts, going back and encouraging them over the last 25 years. And then they started doing it. And then our third-year Bible college students started going up to where is the Sioux? She is. Uh, was it about two years ago, they went up and our students prophesied over 1,200 at Rick Joyner's conference. He asked them, to, and he came, his wife came over and asked them to prophesy over him and them. Now, that's, that's amazing, amen? And then, in, uh, how many was it Nashville, uh, the call? Was, we all, was all the Nashville, the call, you remember? Did you know, while we were up on the stage and you were out there in the front, they had a place in the back where they formed about 20, 25 teams, uh, prophetic teams, and they prophesied over, they said over 
several thousand people during that whole day. Did you know when I first received that visitation from God in 1973, you know, and that was... Uh, when I was in my darkest hour and my lowest time is when I got my greatest visitation. Did you hear me? Good. Yes. I mean, Phil, you might, you might be in your darkest hour and your lowest time. You're getting ready for your greatest visitation. Good. And good. you're going to get it this week. Amen. You're going to get a visitation of God. Praise God. 